OK, let's make a start then. Let's, um, hopefully today we're going to finish off a section on telescopes. And if you remember last time, we had a look at the first type of telescope, which is called a refracting telescope. OK. Whenever you see the word refraction or refractor or refracting, it's to do with lenses. All right. So at the front of a refracting telescope, you have a great big lens. OK. That lens is called the objective and it collects the light, all right? The thing that collects the light, the incoming parallel light from distant stars or the moon or a planet or anything. Uh, in the case of a refracting telescope, that's a, a lens. So the objective is a lens, and that's what's called a refracting telescope, OK? Um, there's a rather neater design on the board, OK? Um, rather better drawing of an astronomical refracting telescope. Uh, as you can see at the front here, drawn by the way round, you've got the objective lens, great big thing there, collecting the light, brings the light down to a focus, and then there's a second lens, normally with a shorter focal length, a much fatter, stronger lens, with a shorter focal length, and what that does is it basically magnifies the image and presents it to your eye, so your eye gets nice parallel light, okay? Uh, so a telescope like this doesn't make things look closer, it makes things look bigger, which obviously to the human brain you associate with um, uh, you associate with things being closer. But if you use it in space, if you use it to look at stars and things like that, then it just makes them look brighter. Right? Through any telescope on the Earth or the Hubble Space Telescope, stars look like dots. So we talked last time about magnification not being the most important thing for astronomy, and you can see that if you imagine looking at a star. Even through a Hubble Space Telescope, they look exactly the same as the naked eye, look like dots. All right? In astronomy, we're not so concerned about magnification. All right? Think about a point like dot like a star. Magnification is obviously not the thing. Okay. A better way of understanding how this type of telescope works is to think about the size, the aperture, the diameter of the objective lens is considerably bigger than the human eye. All right? And for that reason, it gets a lot more light in. That means when you look at faint things in the night sky, you get a brighter image. You may want to magnify that image, but the point is you've got enough light in to be able to see it. Okay? So using telescopes of astronomy is slightly different to using a pair of binoculars on the Earth, where brightness really isn't an issue. There's always tons of daylight around. But in astronomy, it's about aperture, it's about the size of the objective, and the amount of light you can get in. Okay? Uh, there are various designs of refracting telescope. Um, there's the one that Galileo invented, um, and this is the astronomical refracting telescope. Um, but that's beyond your syllabus, really. All right? The different types of refractor you don't need to know. Objective lens, eyepiece lens is all you really need to know about. Okay? Now, we saw last time there are a couple of problems with refracting telescopes. If you want to make them, and in astronomy, what would you want to do? You want to make them with a very large aperture. All right? Because of what we're doing in astronomy, trying to grab every little scrap of light from a very, very faint object so that we can have a look at it in detail. Because of that, we want to make the objective lens very big, very wide, you know, feet or meters across. And unfortunately, if you look at the design over there, you can see it's got to go at the end of the tube that faces the star, which ends up with telescopes, which are very, very unwieldy. So two problems, one to do with size, and the other one, which we mentioned last time, to do with false color. Okay. Different colors are refracted. Remember to use that word. Different colors are refracted by different amounts by the edge of the lens. Very difficult to get round, and that's what led Sir Isaac Newton to, in the end, give up trying to solve it and to invent the reflecting telescope. Okay. Now, this is the second type of telescope you need to know about, and it works in a slightly different way. Okay. A lot of things are the same. You still have an objective, you still have an eyepiece, etc., etc. But this type of telescope is called a reflecting telescope. Okay. It's called a reflecting telescope because what's collecting the parallel light from the stars? Now, this looks a bit confusing on the diagram because it's at the other end of the telescope. All right. You've got your starlight coming in like this. So here's the light from a distant star coming in. Okay. It goes down to the back of the telescope normally where it hits a concave mirror. Okay, this is obviously a mirror and it reflects the light. Okay, ordinarily it would reflect it down to a focal point, just like a convex lens, a concave mirror reflects light down to a focal point. Okay, 
And what you could do is let the light do that and then put the eyepiece there. So put your eyepiece lens there. So there's your objective, but it's a mirror this time, reflecting telescope. Uh, you could then put your eyepiece lens there and just like the first telescope, the light would come out into your eye and that would work fine. All right. What's the difference? The eyepiece is the same, but this time we're not using a lens to collect the light, we're using a mirror. Okay. And importantly, at the bottom of the tube, so here's the sky. Notice the mirror has to go at the bottom of the tube at the other end. Now for engineers trying to make these things, when the mirrors get the size of this room, or the size of a small playing field or something like that, that's really important. The mirror can go at the bottom of the tube, and because it's a mirror, you can put stuff are you with me? You can put things behind it. So you can have giant bits of metal and iron behind it to hold it perfectly in place. Okay? So once telescopes got to a certain size, as we talked about last week, people changed over to using reflecting telescopes. Big sorting, the big problem that you've sorted out is the size problem. Okay? You're trying to make a big mirror, not a big lens. That can go at the bottom of the tube, not the top. And of course, being a mirror, you can support it from behind. So you've solved the size problem largely. And also, sorry, not that solved, is it? Uh, false colour. Because there is no reflection, sorry, start again. Because there is no refraction, what actually happens is the light just reflects off the shiny piece of metal. All right? a, piece of, a mirror is normally a piece of glass with some shiny metal on, and when the light hits the shiny metal, boing. Off it goes. Okay. In theory, that's just a reflection. Okay. Telescopes like this with open tubes, you have to have the mirrors resilvered every few years or so. The mirrors need resilvering because dust and other bits and bobs get attached to it. Okay. So it looks just like an ordinary mirror, but it would have to be face silvered. In other words, on the curved piece of glass, you wouldn't put the silver on the back like you do on a mirror at home. You'd put it on the front. Okay. Can anyone see the other slight technical difficulty with this telescope? What we're starting to draw here is a Newtonian reflector. In honour of the gentleman who first invented the reflecting telescope, it's, this design is called the Newtonian. Where would you have to stand to use this telescope? Yeah, you'd have to put your head in the tube. Now, to be fair, if the mirror is the size of this room, could you observe in a little cage above the ceiling? It's perfectly possible. There are telescopes made like that. Yes, the person observing would get in the way. They'd block a bit of light. But if your mirror is the size of this room, you could probably manage it. So it's not impossible to make telescopes that way. But in practice, what we normally do is we just put in a little tiny flat mirror called the flat, basically. And what that does is to basically bounce the light, are you with me, through 90 degrees. It doesn't do anything in terms of focusing the telescope, but it's just for convenience. We don't really want the focus to be in the middle of the telescope. So we flip the light through 90 degrees, and then out here it's exactly the same. The light comes out, goes through the eyepiece lens, and goes into your eye. Okay, so the eyepiece lens goes down there. Our formula, F objective over FI, works exactly the same. Okay, so again, you want very big, very long focal length normally, mirrors. Okay, but as I said, it solves the size problem. Okay, making large versions of this is quite easy. It also solves the false colour problem, he said, putting his false teeth in. Okay, does that sort of make sense? Yeah? And so that's the second type of telescope you need to know about, called a Newtonian reflector. Okay, and we've got one in the room today, which you can have a look at in just a minute. All right? Now, in your syllabus, you don't need to know the various different designs of reflector. This is the simplest type of reflector, called a Newtonian. Okay, some slight issues. One, the end of the tube is open. Okay, um, if you look at our telescope over here, you can see the end of the tube is completely open and the mirror is just at the back there. Okay, problem is obviously you can get bugs and moisture and dust and all sorts of gubbins falling in the tube, um, and that's why these mirrors need resilvering every now and then. But this is very simple. How much glass do you put in the way of the light, which will absorb some brightness and spread the light out slightly? Practically nothing, all right? You can make, quite cheaply, very big Newtonian reflectors, and they're probably the best value for money. If you want to see a lot of things in the sky for the smallest amount of money, the Newtonian reflector, all right? However, they are quite tricky to use sometimes. They've got this problem, they've got the open tube, etc., etc. 
Um, so as far as you're concerned, that is the reflecting telescope. Okay. However, if you look at a lot of modern telescopes, particularly ones linked to computers and things, you'll find there's a, th a second design of reflector. There's many, many designs of reflecting telescope, but the one you perhaps ought to know about uh, is called the Cassegrain. Again, I think I'm slightly off the syllabus here. Okay, you don't need to know the difference in design between a Newtonian and a Cassegrain. But it's quite important, if you uh, start asking your parents for a telescope for Christmas, then um, you'll quickly come up against these. If you want to buy a telescope and you want to you know, get one that will show you lots of things for the smallest amount of money, Cassegrain is very popular because it solves this open tube problem. Okay? What you do is you have your tube and you have your mirror like that. You let the light come in from the distant star. So there's your distant star, there's the light coming in. Okay. Again, what it would naturally do is to focus it down to a focus and you could put your eyepiece here. What you do with the Cassegrain is you put another mirror there. It's normally flattish, and what it does is it bounces the light out the back of the telescope. All right? And you then, obviously, it forms a focal point there, and you put your eyepiece there, and people put their eyes like that. Okay? Now, the big advantage of this is you can simply, you can simply put a plate of glass across the front of the lens across the front of the mirror. Okay, So across here you have basically a flat piece of glass with a mirror in the middle. Okay, That mirror does reduce the light slightly. So if you buy one of these that says it's got an aperture of 8 inches, if you measure it, it'll be slightly bigger. It's got the same area as if it was 8 inches across, but obviously it loses a chunk out the middle because of the flat, or the secondary mirror as it's known. It often isn't flat, it's often slightly curved to help with the focusing. Okay, but in principle you have to make them slightly bigger. But the big advantage is the tube is then sealed. All right, there's the eyepiece tube where you put your eyepiece in like that. Okay, um, I've got a picture here. If you go to any of the big telescope manufacturers, Mead or Celestron or anybody like that, you'll see loads of them. All right. Um, in terms of what you can do with them for the amount of money, they're a very popular design. If you're not into going to get your Newtonian reflectors mirror resilvered every five years. These are brilliant because they can be completely sealed. You actually remove the air from here. I think they put nitrogen in or something. They pump all the air out. They completely air seal the tube. Okay? So, and you can recognise them immediately. Can you see? A little flat mirror. So the light's going in at the front. It's going to the back of the telescope where the, the big mirror is. That's sending it back to this little mirror which is bouncing it back. And then the person, if they were looking at it, you can see here, they look in the back of the telescope, all right? Um, quite a tricky design, you need to make a mirror with a hole in it. So there's some issues with this, but the Cassegrain is really popular at the moment because you can just seal the tube. The whole tube is sealed, they're normally guaranteed for life. It's absolutely airtight, it's got nitrogen in it, and that mirror on the back is face silver, and it is basically encased in nitrogen for the rest of its life. It's never going to need resilvering, okay? In the Newtonian, the mirror is open to the air, and you end up with um, having to have it resealed, resilvered every now and then. Okay? Plus the size as well. If this mirror has a focal length of 2 metres, you basically need a tube 2 metres long. Here, um, some of these telescopes, the one I've got at home is about that big, and it has a focal length of about a metre and a half. There's the focal length there. If you follow, you don't need to have the full length. So that's where they look quite stubby sort of things. You don't need the long tube and the long open tube of the Newtonian. Okay? Does that sort of make sense? As I say, if you look at modern telescopes, it's a really popular design. The Cassegrain and variations on the Cassegrain. The Schmidt Cassegrain and the Max Sukal and all the various ones. You can fiddle around. Some of them have a lens at the front. This piece of glass at the front isn't flat. It's actually slightly a lens. This mirror is sometimes slightly curved. There's all kinds of jiggling around you can do, but the basic idea is to bounce the light back through the main mirror, and that gives you this short sealed tube. Okay?